Good morning. I want to thank everyone for being here, including our leaders and uh, the media. Thank you for coming this morning. And our Fayette County uh, Public School employees, our 16th District PTA representation. I also want to acknowledge our dignitaries that we have with us uh, this morning. Uh, we have our Sheriff, Sheriff Witt. We also, yes, Sheriff Witt, gonna, okay. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We have um, Chief Compton for uh, Metro. Thank you for being here. Obviously, we have um, Mayor Gray, our esteemed mayor. I often say that you cannot have a high performing organization without a peak performing board. And joining us this morning are our board member Stephanie Spires. Thank you. And our board chair, Melissa Bacon. I do want to begin this press conference with a moment of silence for the students and educators who have lost their lives. Please join me. Thank you. Twice in the past month, children and school staff have lost their lives to gun violence. As a father and as your servant superintendent, I join you in grief and outrage regarding these unspeakable acts. Our hearts are broken as we unite with compassion for those directly impacted. But I stand before you to tell you that thoughts and prayers are not enough. The time for action is now. Since the shooting, students, staff, and families in our community have expressed widespread anxiety and concern. And I would say that's sweeping the nation. Many have reached out to me to ask, what are the existing safeguards? And to suggest additional steps. We remain committed to ensuring that our schools are the safest places in our community. And I promise that we continue to be vigilant and proactive because no child should go to school in fear and every family should welcome their children home at the end of the school day. We are extremely fortunate in our school district to have our own department, law enforcement, as well as support from the Lexington Police and Fire Departments and Sheriff's Office. Fayette County Public Schools has a dedicated law enforcement division since 1971. That's 47 years of service. Fully sworn officers with the same training and authority as state or city police, Fayette County Public School law enforcement officers have primary jurisdiction on all school campuses and district owned sites. The department has 35 officers with teams stationed in each high school and assigned to regularly patrol elementary and middle schools in order to provide a strengthened police presence on all of our campuses. Now, two weeks ago, our esteemed mayor, Mayor Gray, announced that Fayette County Public Schools Department of Law Enforcement Chief Lawrence Weathers would be the next Lexington Police Chief. And we honor and salute him. I would say that Lawrence has redefined what it means to be a chief and to be a role model and to deploy our law enforcement officers in a way that they're visible, that they're adding uh, safety, but more importantly, building relationships. And we've been blessed to have outstanding chiefs since the inception of the law enforcement division. Most, not most notably during my tenure, we had Chief Paulette Givens down our chief weathers and i'm pleased to announce that what great leaders do is they plan for the future and that's through succession planning and i'm pleased to announce our next chief is interim chief martin schaefer let's give him a hand Now, Martin has played an important role in many of the positive changes that have taken place under the leadership of Chief Weathers, and I believe he is the right champion to carry this work forward and provide continuity to our schools and community. He understands and embraces the many unique roles our officers play as mentors, counselors, and confidants who contribute to a climate of trust in addition to enforcing the law. 
in reinforcing safety and security procedures. Martin Joint Fayette County uh, Law Department, I'm sorry, Public Schools Department of Law Enforcement in 2012 and has served at both Bryan Station and Paul Lawrence Dunbar High Schools. Prior to joining the district, he served as a Kentucky State Police Trooper and since 1993, he has been a member of the Kentucky Arm National Army National Guard and has done two <coughs> tours in Iraq. Now I'd like to ask Chief Schaefer to come forward and say a few words. Good morning. Thank you, Superintendent Cock, for allowing me to serve. Fayette County Public Schools Law Enforcement looks forward to taking part in your vision. Since 1971, Fayette County Public Schools Law Enforcement has strived to create a safe environment for students, parents, and staff. We operate with more than 30 sworn officers dedicated to maximizing safety and enhancing the learning environment. Law enforcement serves in our community schools and maintains partnerships with local and federal law enforcement agencies. This helps build a comprehensive network of safety in our schools and community. This collaboration of community policing with a focus on our schools serves as our best tool to help prevent violence. Our officers attend the Department of Criminal Justice Training Academy where they receive training as a police officer. Our training does not end there, we receive additional training in crisis intervention, emergency preparedness, drug and alcohol abuse prevention, gun violence prevention techniques, and this summer we'll train with the FBI in school safety and security. This training will be spread throughout the district. Our dispatchers stand ready 24-7 for calls for service, and they can be reached at 381-4200. We interact daily with students, staff and parents to build relationship that fortify our position as school protectors. In light of recent events, both in and out of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, we have examined our own practices. Chief Weathers has established priorities of community policing, continual officer development, and engaging students, staff, and parents to promote safety. These priorities have been met with acceptance from our community and will continue to be the cornerstone of our operations. As interim chief, I receive a department that is established, experienced, and trained. We will continue to examine tactics, techniques, and procedures as we always strive to be better today than we were yesterday. We take safety to heart and will continue to grow upon the great works and accomplishments of Chief Weathers. Thank you. The best part of this department is that we can be servant leaders helping to shape our community. Thank you. And I also want to acknowledge Chief Schaefer's wife who's here with us. And she's a uh, educator in the district. And uh, I would say is the person most responsible, responsible for bringing Chief to Fayette County. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> now law enforcement is just one piece of Fayette County's five-pronged approach to school safety and security through prevention, and deterrence. Each member of our school community, including students, families, employees, and community members, plays an important role because protecting our students is a goal we all share. I can say with confidence that each of our Fayette County Public Schools has excellent safety and security procedures that include specific steps to be taken in response to a threat or an active shooter. Every school and special program in the district has developed detailed emergency plans that include regularly practicing safety drills, such as lockdowns, which is what would be employed in the event of an intruder. Fayette County has also invested in enhanced security measures, including anonymous tip lines, additional cameras, handheld metal detectors, and surveillance at the high schools. During the school day, exterior, um, Mm. During the school day, exterior school doors are locked and visitors are screened visually before they are buzzed into the building. Access to the building is granted through controlled points of entry and all visitors entering the school must show identification. That allows us to know who is in the building at all times. 
We will also take the following immediate steps to strengthen existing efforts. The anonymous tip line will be expanded to include elementary schools and the district overall. Links for all schools in the district will be featured prominently on corresponding websites in a consistent location. Handheld metal detector wands will be provided to all special programs and middle schools. All secondary schools will be required to share specific plans and protocols for using the wands. You would see an increase of the use of these handheld metal detectors throughout our secondary schools. Schools will reinforce the importance of locking all exterior doors and work with students, staff, and volunteers to ensure that the doors are not propped open or opened for visitors. Middle and high schools without secured vestibules will be provided an additional staff member to monitor these school entrances and provide additional support when it comes to safety and security. Law enforcement schedules will be adjusted to provide additional presence in all of our special programs and middle schools. All district level staff providing services in all schools will wear a picture identification badge so that we know who is there to help us, who are those caring adults. Emergency drills will be expanded to ensure students and staff are prepared to go into lockdown throughout the school day, including lunch, recess, between classes, and at the beginning and end of the school day. Now these are just the first changes that you will see. We also have to be forward thinking and proactive about our next steps. That's why we're fully commissioning the District School Safety Advisory Council to tackle these complex issues immediately. <coughs> we have taken precautions and developed plans, but it's time to have some open and honest dialogue about what else we can do. We have to be willing to do what is uncomfortable. This council will be comprised of students, teachers, parents, school leaders, district leaders, Lexington, Fayette, Urban County, government representatives, and community business and faith leaders. And what I want to do at this time is to share with you, I know the press, you received the probably two-pager, but who comprises this committee, or this council, excuse me, specifically. First, the purpose of the Fayette County Public Schools District Safety Advisory Council will be to examine best practices in school safety and develop specific recommendations to ensure all Fayette County Public Schools are safe places to learn and work. <coughs> Working with the council will be Board Member Darrell Love, who will be serving as the Advisory Council of Board Liaison. Membership includes Mr. Steve Byers, Vice President, Money Watch Advisors. Shelley Chatfield, General Counsel, Fayette County Public Schools. Penny Christian, Vice President, 16th District PTA. Lisa Defendall, District Spokesperson, Fayette County Public Schools. Ron Edmondson, Pastor, Emmanuel Baptist Church. I love saying that name. Chris Ford, Commissioner of Social Services. Mike Jones, Principal of Crawford. Bob Moore, Director of Technology, Fayette County Public Schools. Abdul Muhammad, Chair of Fayette County Public Schools Equity Council. Kelly Parmley, Chair of Fayette County Public Schools Community Partners Leadership Team. PG Peoples, President and CEO, Urban League of Lexington, Fayette County. Randy Peffer, High School Chief, Fayette County Public Schools. Greg Ross, Principal of Academy for Leadership at Mill Creek Elementary School. Of course, our Chief, Martin Schaefer, Faith Thompson, Director of Student Support Services, Fayette County Public Schools. Myron Thompson, our Chief Operating Officer, Fayette County Public Schools. Dante Techner, Behavior Coach, the Learning Center. Dr. Barry Williams, Parent and Pediatric Specialist at Lexington Clinic. Wanda Williams, Teacher at Yates Elementary School. We're also going to include two Fayette County Public School High School students, representatives from our Office of Fayette County Sheriff, representatives from Lexington Police Department, and representatives from Lexington Fire Department. The meeting dates for the Advisory Council will be March 1st, and that's on Thursday at 6 p.m. at Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. I want to say that because I want to invite the public to come out, as well as those in surrounding counties to 
listen to the conversation, the issues that we're going to be discussing and making recommendations to guide our work. At our first meeting, we have a presentation focused on school safety. <coughs> the presenter is John Akers, and we will give you the resume, but he's executive director for Kentucky Center for School Safety and former principal of Bryan Station and Paul Lawrence Dunbar High Schools. Also with us will be William Bill Mazaleski, a senior consultant with several groups specializing in school safety, threat assessment, emergency management, and homeland security. Mr. Mazaleski is a recently retired after serving more than 40 years at the Department of Justice and Education. All meetings will be videotaped and broadcast on FCPS TV. We also have a website for community members to participate. Now, why is that important? Because we know that the various um, safety measures that are being discussed, whether you're talking about fixed metal detectors, you're talking about um, having a pat-down screening procedure or baggage screening procedure, we want to know from the experts what are the best practice and what does research say are most effective in keeping our students and staff safe. That's just the first topic. You may also, for members of the media, those names may sound familiar because both John and Bill will be in Frankfurt earlier that day to speak to lawmakers regarding uh, school safety. We are fortunate in Fayette County that not only will they be in Frankfurt in the morning, but we will have them with us in the evening. And so they'll be able to um, address some of those uh, questions and what's the best way to keep our students safe. Some of the other topics um, at future meetings will include mental health, will include social media, and will include uh, juvenile crime and justice. The city of Lexington has worked alongside us on these issues for years and will play an important role in our work going forward. And that's why it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Mayor Jim Gray to say a few words this morning. Mayor Gray. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent, for the invitation to be here today. I want to recognize and thank your board members as well, already recognized. And thanks to interim chief from the city, Chief Ron Compton, who's with us today, and Fire Department Assistant Chief Todd Reese for joining us today, Social Services Commissioner Chris Ford, Sheriff Kathy Witt. Mr. Superintendent, we are ready to work with you and support you to do whatever it takes to help keep our schools safe and our children safe. There is outstanding leadership in our schools. And a great deal is already being done to keep students safe. Even so, I'm a believer in continuous improvement as are you. And there's always ways to improve. Earlier this month in deciding on a new chief for the Lexington police, there were a lot of reasons I looked to Lawrence Weathers. And Superintendent Kalk has already mentioned some of those, but one of the main reasons is what we're talking about here today. Lawrence has been the Director of Law Enforcement for Fayette County Schools for two years now. He knows school security inside and out, and he can bring and will bring that experience and that opportunity for us to work together to our entire city. Earlier <clears throat> now, now we have learned from our own experiences how essential it is for all our law enforcement agencies, including police, schools, FBI, universities, and the sheriff to share information and work together intentionally and deliberately and routinely. Even so, we are aware that in light of recent events, it's time to re-examine those relationships and to look for ways to improve. Since the incident in Marshall County, local school officials, the FBI, and police have met several times and a preventive exercise called a tabletop exercise is planned for March 15th. It is insane that Washington is not treating this like the crisis it is. 
If these 18 school shootings this year have taught us anything, it's that it's well past time to act. We obviously can't and won't wait for, uh, for Washington to act. It is up to us. It's up to locals. And we know that enough is enough. Yes, Lexington schools are safe, but we must do everything in our power to even improve school safety. Our kids deserve nothing less than everything we've got. I fully support Superintendent Calk's plan for this advisory council. And recently, he and I have discussed the idea of metal detectors, which he mentioned. There are lots of different points of view on this, but the, if the advisory council determines that the detectors can be a tool to keep schools safe, I will ask the city council to help fund the program. Now, everyone knows the school system has its own police force, but I have also offered immediate assistance for added security. Our police officers, Interim Chief Compton has confirmed this, our police officers are here to help, as are Sheriff Witt's deputies. Thank you both. Thank you. And Superintendent Cox says they will be considering both of these offers for help. We all know that it's also important for parents and students to participate in this effort with this advisory council, telling us what will help them feel safer. If we've learned anything in the past few days, it is that our kids should have a say when it comes to their right to a safe school. Superintendent Cox. Thanks to you and to all your school principals, law enforcement officers, teachers, and staff. Thanks to all of you for the important work you do every single day. Thank you all. Thank you, Chief. Now, next an example of true partnership. Now, over the next five weeks, the Advisory Council will act with urgency, prudence, and foresight in order to develop specific and actionable recommendations. Knowing that some of these recommendations may require legislative change, the group will conclude its work the first week of April in order to give members of the General Assembly time to review and act upon those before they go home on April 13th. What I want to do is to ask us to applaud on the front end. I want to thank those who are going to give their time and service to this advisory council. Let's give them a hand. That's important. Now, with the Winter Olympics happening as we speak, perhaps we can draw some wisdom from Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, when skating over thin ice, our safety is our speed. Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin is scheduled to attend the National Governors Association meeting in Washington this weekend. Given the heightened attention to these issues across our nation, I would anticipate he might have the opportunity to confer with colleagues about the action needed. There are reasons that school shootings are an American problem, and we need lawmakers at the state and national level to address the root causes and contributing factors. Five bills related to school safety have already been introduced in the Kentucky General Assembly, three in the Senate, and two in the House. They include proposals to create statewide school safety and crisis hotline, establish a less than lethal safety response program, add armed marshals in schools, and expand carry and conceal laws to enable teachers and other school employees to carry personal firearms at work. Those decisions are taking place against a backdrop of a looming pension crisis and significant budget deficit, on top of the fact that school districts across the state are already reeling from consecutive years of funding cuts that have not been restored and mid-year budget reductions. Through a draft spending plan has not been released by either the Senate or the House, in his State of the Commonwealth and Budget Address, Governor Bevin said, the reality is we don't have enough money to meet the obligations that this state has. The governor's draft budget includes increased funding for social workers and reforms in the adoption and foster care systems that will provide stability for children. Now those investments, and I want to commend the governor for those investments, but I would also urge 
or encourage the governor to understand that those investments go hand in hand with strengthening families, which in turn will bolster safety and security in our communities. Additionally, we need fully funded public education and increased investments in school safety and security and mental health services. If you think about Florida and the Republican controlled legislature, they're looking at raising the age to be able to legally purchase a firearm. They're looking at banning the bump stock. They're also looking at increasing funding for mental health. We should be looking at fully funding public education, increasing funding for school safety and security, as well as increased funding for mental health. These issues are bigger than Fayette County. It shouldn't depend on where you live when it comes to safety. All children across the Commonwealth deserve a safe learning environment. And therefore, I would urge and encourage our governor to look at creating a statewide task force or committee to look at these issues systemically across the Commonwealth. Again, all children deserve to learn in a safe learning environment. Thank you.